Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to the final intermission of Let's Play Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Today we're going to hunt down the rest of the Headless, starting with this one in the Sunken Valley. We'll get some prayer beads and the last prosthetic tool. We'll finish Hanbei's quest finally. We'll progress the Divine Child's quest and one of the endings that ties into it. And then we will drink a lot of sake. First! Grounded headless tend to be sturdier if you aren't using divine confetti. And the miasma around them, as we've seen in the main playthrough a little bit, will slow you down. It'll slow all your movements. And since all of their sword strikes will build up a little bit of terror, the Phoenix Lilac Umbrella is, as always, your friend. Also, they have a grab attack where they uh, teleport behind you and try to extract your Shirikodama. And those words will make more sense momentarily. Not quite yet. But right now, he'll just reach right up in there. So, for this grab attack, they reach deep inside your butthole to extract a pearlescent orb that contains your soul. That's a Shirikodama. It's literally an anal bead that contains your soul. It's an anal soul bead. And he just rips it straight on out. Just tugs it out like a chainsaw. I mean, the way you start a chainsaw. Ah, oh, that sucked. <laughs> so that is Goken. So all the other headless fights are identical. They're identical either to that one or to the other underwater one that we fought at the Fountainhead Palace. So we're going to go ahead and montage through the rest of them except for the last one in Sempo Temple's Caves, because I want to show something specific with that one. It's not specific to this fight, but it's a really easy way to beat them. You use the Malcontent Finger Whistle upgrade, and that will stun them for a long-ass time. And then you can just wail on them means you'll never end up having to rebuff Divine Confetti. Because one confetti will get you through. Usually the Malcontent only works three times a fight, but really shouldn't need more than three stuns. And that's it for the Headless. So next up, I wound the clock back because I forgot several of these prayer beads are completely missable if you progress the game past the Divine Dragon fight because it causes a change in the world state. This Lone Shadow guy, for instance, where the Tengu of Ashina uh, used to hang out, it's the Serpent Shrine in Ashina Castle, he'll disappear after you beat the Divine Dragon. So you have a, a limited window to get the prayer bead off of him. Now the next one that we're going after is the Chained Ogre in Ashna Castle. I think this one also disappears after the Divine Dragon, but I don't recall. Either way, better get it while I can. He's chained up beneath the castle next to uh, our final prosthetic tool, by the way. And you even get to start with Death Blow on him. And remember, we didn't see this in the very first Chained Ogre fight, but he is terrified of fire, as is anything with red eyes. He doesn't handle it super well. Uh, so you can really take advantage of the flame vent to good effect here. 
even used it as an opportunity to show a few of the other upgrades off. He did armor through that one just to finish the grab attack animation, which is a bummer, but not too challenging a fight. I would say that if you're trying to fight this one straight up, it's a little bit harder than the first one in the game because you have a way more limited space to work with. You kind of need that space against something with such a wild ass grab animation. You also get Shinobi Medicine rank 3 from it. Ah, uh, the latent ability. And then in the room adjacent to that chained ogre, uh, you can find a chest and a few shortcuts, uh, but a chest containing Sabimaru. Oh, and an eel liver. This is going to be our final prosthetic tool once we go and turn it in. An ancient Kodachi sword, its blade mottled with bluish rust, can be fitted to the shinobi prosthetic to create a tool forged by the Ashina clan to resist the inhuman evil that had invaded Ashina in times long forgotten. It was the poisonous gift of the blue rust that finally drove the spirits out. Now, the last prayer bead is where we first met the Tengu of Ashina. You want something? Mm. Well, if not, be gone. War is on the horizon, a dreadful one at that. The dead will rise as mountains, and the hate will flow like an inferno. It will give birth to a demon. I'm certain of it. Now then, I doubt you would want to meet a demon, would you? Now then, I... Yes, we would never want to fight a demon in this game. Luckily, we will never fight a boss that is a demon. Uh, so for this prayer bead, I think you can get this one anytime, but I just want to get it out of the way. Uh, again, this is where we first met the Tango of Ashina. I forgot to grapple up to the rafters, which lets you reach this attic with a bead in it. And then the final three prayer beads are going to be in the end game. We'll be getting those in the main LP. Next, we're going to be turning some stuff in. That's the ninth out of ten necklaces. And we are one-fourth of the way to the last one. Oh. This is the final Gord Seed upgrade. Perfect. Now we have ten charges. And we'll also turn Sabimaru in. And that is all of the prosthetic tools as well. I think I re-showed getting the Phantom Kunai and the uh, Phoenix Suzaku umbrella. Oh, Suzaku's the Lotus umbrella. Keep combining that with the uh, Phoenix Lilac umbrella. And the Malcontent, which we've actually already seen. Because I chopped this up in a weird order. Next, uh, finally, several people were curious if we could use the Mortal Blade Sir, to help Hombe. What is it? We can. The mortal blade. What? It's real. You don't suppose you could use it to end this curse of mine? I will. Of course. Thank you. Mm. A man with your skill could grant a merciful death. Couldn't you? Leave it to me. Splendid. I must give my thanks to Sekijo. I will prepare for the beyond. The next time you see me, I'll be ready. So just rest at the idol and come back. Finally die. My shame for not following my master into death. Can finally. You're certain of this? Yes. I want you to kill me. As you wish. Go on. Do it. It's cathartic how often we get to stab centipedes in this. 
Hidden Tooth, a false tooth loaded with a secret shinobi drug, blue in color, can be used repeatedly. Crush the blue nostrum between the back teeth to die as often as one pleases. Could be useful in certain situations. Surely an unnecessary reminder, but the first death is typically one's last. Kind of like an infinite use bite down. And finally, we still have more to do with the Divine Child. Uh, we need to keep harvesting rice from her and giving persimmons until she disappears and goes to the Halls of Illusion. Uh, first, before you can progress this, you need to give the Divine Child, uh, uh, Kuro the Divine Heir, her rice. Did you give the rice to the Divine Heir? Yes, he made rice balls out of it. The Divine Heir of the Dragon's Heritage? He made them himself. Yes, and he was enthusiastic. And I had one. It was... very good. <laughs> That's good to hear. Oh, I see. He may be the divine heir of the dragon's heritage, but he's still human after all. What am I saying? Of course he is. I am sure he had his doubts about severing immortality as well. Yet even so, it is the path he chose. There is something I would like to ask you, Shinobi of the Divine Heir. Yes? What is his name? Lord Kuro. Lord Kuro. It has a fine ring to it. I should like to meet him someday. Shinobi of the Divine Heir, you are welcome here. So eventually Devo the uh, Divine Child moves to the Halls of Illusion. I don't want to lose them. If I were to choose the path of returning the dragon's heritage, it may come to pass that I would have to leave all of you. Thank you for your kind words. <laughs> My friends, listen. He is actually quite kind. He gave me this. Hello? Oh, Shinobi of the Divine Heir. I didn't hear you come in. It is thanks to you that I've been able to have a deep conversation with my friends. With the children of the Rejuvenating Waters? Yes. There is something I would like to discuss. I believe we should aim not to sever the dragon's heritage, but instead to return it to its rightful place. Return the dragon's blood? That's right. The dragon's heritage was set free from its homeland and it drifted here to Japan. Its power was never meant for this land. Until something is done, it will continue to corrupt the lives of those who encounter it. The dragon's heritage and those connected to it. It is only right that they return home, to the west, to the birthplace of the divine dragon. However, there is one problem. I am unsure of the exact destination. Who would know? Perhaps the High Priest of Senpo Temple. Or... And he is? He's the founder of Senpo Temple. I wonder how old he actually is. He can be found in a narrow cave, not far from the Inner Sanctum. Shinobi of the Divine Heir. Yes? This path differs from that of the one to sever immortality. I do not wish to force my opinion upon you. Should you wish to return the dragon's heritage, then perhaps you should seek out the High Senpo Priest. I'll think about it. This priest is in the cave with all the centipedes. Uh, the wolverine centipedes, I should say. Uh, where we found this dude earlier. Sacred passage on a path to enlightenment. Undying, I pray for the dragon's return. Undying, lo, let us... Wait an age for the divine air to assimilate the cold dragon tears, for the cradle to consume the pair of serpentine fruits. Let the cradle endure, giving him shelter, granting his return to the west. And after all this, the divine child of rejuvenation returns to the inner sanctum. Shinobi of the divine air, have you perhaps met with the high priest of Senpo Temple? I found him. He was dead. The High Priest was infested. How could this come to be? I do not know. However, he left this note. I will take a look. Hmm, I see. 
Consuming two persimmons of the serpent will allow one to become a cradle for the divine heir. This will make it possible to return the dragon's heritage to its homeland. I, I shall become the cradle. You're sure of this? Of course. I am the only surviving divine child of the rejuvenating waters. Death does not come easily to me. Shinobi of the divine air, if you wish to take the path to return the dragon's heritage, then bring me two persimmons of the serpent. Where should I begin? I believe it is said that the liver of a great serpent is stained red like a persimmon. Shinobi of the divine air, have you acquired both persimmons of the serpent? Yes, I've found them. This shade of red, it is as I expected. A persimmon is an apt comparison. You're actually going to eat them? Of course. Doing so will allow me to become a cradle to return the dragon's heritage to its home. However, I hesitate to eat them in front of you. Please come back after some time. And all that means is one single rest. This, by the way, is necessary for one of the endings. of the divine air it appears i have succeeded in becoming the cradle could you please take my hand yes what it is cold much like an ice house which is why see my tears they freeze as they flow down my face these frozen tears take them tears that were shed by the divine child of rejuvenation once she became the cradle they are but frozen drops by having Kuro drink both the dragon tears and the frozen tears, the cradle uh, the cradling ritual can be performed. Cold dragon tears are just that. Frozen tears. Does this mean Yes, I believe this is what the text referred to as cold dragon tears. The divine heir must drink them together with the dragon tears of the divine realm. If he does so, I believe Lord Kuro will be able to rest within the cradle. Shinobi of the Divine Air, what would you ask of me? Give me some rice. What is it? Hold out your hand. All right. Bless us with a silvery harvest. This is... it's cold. With my body so cold, the rice shines with an icy gleam. It's like fine snow. <laughs> That is true. Then that is what we shall call it. Shinobi of the Divine Air, this fine snow is yours. Chilled silvery rice that spilled from the palms of the Child of Rejuvenation. Gradually recovers blah blah blah. Slightly more so than regular rice. The cold sweetens the rice. Rice is indeed precious. The flavor grows richer and richer, raising one's spirits higher and higher. Please return should you want for more. Now it's time to do a lot of drinking. So I'm going to leave you with that. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one. Ooh, Dragon Spring? That's fine quality sake. I'll take it then. Now that really hits the spot. Oh, there's nothing quite like this. I often drank this with Dogen. Emma would keep our cups filled. Have you known Lady Emma for long? Oh, that was a long time ago. I found her on a battlefield. A battlefield? She crept up, slowly, towards me, her eyes fixed, unwavering on the rice I held in my hand. It became too much to bear. 
so I gave it to her. Then she just started following me after that. <laughs> Ooh. Well, a while later, Ashina became a dangerous place for the both of us. Around then, Dogen adopted her as his daughter. I suppose it didn't really matter where she ended up. One thing's for sure. She's happier for the fact she wasn't raised by a shinobi. The Crimson Mortal Blade. That means the one that he has must be black then. To abandon oneself in search of strength. How tragic. By the way, Sekiro, it sounds like your battle to sever immortality with Kuro is near a conclusion. You killed all those who interfered. I did. I see. You did well to kill without hesitation. I brought sake. Smart thinking, my boy. Let me see. That's some good sake. This is how we drank when we won our battles. The people of Ashina, together as one. Could you tell me about the rebellion? <laughs> oh, the rebellion? We just took back what was stolen from us. That's... Before this land was... It's a place where we, the Ashina people, lived. Where the waters flowed straight from the source. We were a people who loved our country dearly. <sighs> and we made good sake to boot. But we were heretics. And we were weak. Naturally, we were overrun. Trampled into submission for many long, excruciating years. We couldn't even pray at the water from the springs. <laughs> the way we were then. Even good sake couldn't get us truly drunk. But then, the world fell into chaos. Yes. Amidst the chaos that was Japan. The endless casualties. The flames of war. We found the perfect opportunity to take back our land. But now, it's a place of death. <laughs> it's a bitter thing indeed. Here. Well, well. If it isn't Dragon Spring, you've really done it this time, Sekiro. <laughs> Hit the spot. <laughs> Whenever I used to get my hands on Dragon Spring, a bunch of fools would start coming to me, demanding drinks. Fools? Fools who wouldn't let go of their cross spears while they drank. Fools who would steal sake using illusion techniques. Fools tinkering with half-finished prosthetics. Sake cup in hand. And even the cunning owl, who despite his size would turn bright red after the first drop. That's... Yes. Your father was a fool too. To the fools. Yes. 